which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey as a knitwear and crochet designer. Um, the past week I haven't been knitting that much because I have been having some wrist pains. So I will be talking a little bit about what I have been making because I didn't sit completely still, but um, the remainder of the podcast I will be talking a little bit about knitting injuries, um, what I have experienced, and what I do to kind of soothe them. I'm not a medical expert, but um, I will give you my experiences. So first off, hi, my name is Carmen, and you can find me on these places on social media and the internet. Um, and first off, I want to talk about my advent calendar. So if you've been following me on Vlogmas, which is little tiny vlogs that I post each day on this very same YouTube channel, you will have seen that I have a advent calendar uh, with yarn. So each day I open up a new package of yarn. Uh, the first couple of skeins are in there. <laughs> barely visible. Um, I am making a swatch with the first ball from the advent calendar and I have some more here. So these are days 7, 8, 9, and 10 which is today and the whole advent calendar is a fade so um, it started with very dark gray and then it went lighter and lighter gray and then more and more and more yellow or orange and uh, now it's transitioning to lighter yellow and in the last one there are even some bits of green um, so I'm very excited to see where this fade progresses and um, these yarns are by Wollmetfeave. I will put her name on the screen, Wollmetfeave. She is a Dutch indie dyer and um, I purchased this advent calendar from her. Uh, usually um, indie dyers, if they do advent calendars, it's a lot of work. They usually take pre-orders in like the spring, um, but I was able to snag one of these a little bit later in the year, I think it was over the summer. So they are not available now, but uh, Sylvia does have a Christmas uh, yarn collection on her website. So I will link her website down below and you will uh, be able to see all of her lovely yarns. I love working with her yarns. Um, she's one of my favorite indie dyers, so definitely check her out. Um, I am going to be making the Spectre sweater by Hohi Locatelli with this fade yarn. Uh, the Spectre sweater, I will put a picture up here, is a fade sweater. Uh, but the original only uses four colors. Uh, I will have 24 colors um, that will fade together, so that is very, very exciting. Um, so I will be transitioning way more often, and I'm trying to um, puzzle the pieces of the pattern together in a way that I can use all of the colors. Um, but step one, obviously, is knitting a swatch. So, um, and you may have seen this on a previous Vlogmas episode. So um, I started with three millimeter, which is a smaller needle, needle that, uh, than the pattern calls for. The pattern calls for a 3.25 millimeter needle. So it's not that, that big of a difference. But um, my favorite needle size tends to be three millimeter. Um, and I really like the fabric that I get. Um, also, I am quite a loose knitter, so oftentimes I would need a smaller needle. Um, and the um, other benefit from using a smaller needle is that um, the fabric is more dense and therefore more um, durable. But <laughs> I measured my gauge and it was way off. Uh, the gauge in the pattern is 23 stitches, 23 and a half stitches per 10 centimeters. Mine was 30 stitches per 10 centimeters. So, um, and I calculated for the size that I would be knitting in the pattern, um, the 
stitch circumference of the body or the circumference of the body would be 107 centimeters with my gauge that would be 84 centimeters therefore making it way too small for me um, so yeah that's a big difference so it's about 20 percent difference or more more even so uh, yeah so I decided to um, continue the swatch with the recommended needle size 3.25 and I have recorded a little clip to show you how I um, continued on my swatch so I'm going to put that clip in here so here's my swatch for the specter sweater and I found out that my gauge was way off from the pattern and that I might as well give it a try on um, 3.25 millimeter needles. So here I am, I'm just, um, I've just unraveled the last round of my swatch and because it's blocked, the stitches um, kind of stay, stay put. So I try to, um, to just put them on the new needle and so here I am picking up all of the stitches. I am dropping a few, um, but I'm just going to pick them up again in the next round and I'll show you in a bit. Um, with picking up stitches, if, if they're all just loose like this, I don't uh, really pay attention yet to which leg is forward, so if I'm putting the stitch on twisted or not, um, I'm just picking it up how it's easiest for me and so some will be twisted some will be right way round um, but I will correct all of those in the next round right so I have picked up all of the stitches they are a little bit tight on these needles because um, I've just inserted a bigger needle and now I am purling them um, and I'm making sure to purl through the right leg in order to get them all untwisted wherever I twisted them. And I am purling them because I want to mark on my swatch that I'm going uh, to another needle size. Oh, see here's a dropped stitch. So I'm just picking that up again and then knitting it. So by doing this purl round, I'm kind of marking um, the line between two areas of the swatch because uh, the difference between a 3mm and 3.25mm is, is just not noticeable. Um, so you wouldn't be able to tell if I was any further into the swatch. So that's why I'm purling one round and then um, I will I will have to remember that the first part of the swatch is three millimeter, and the second part of the swatch is three point twenty five. But it's just a little bit easier to see where I can measure my uh, my new gauge. So in the clip, I was uh, saying I was putting in a pearl round, and you can see that here. Apologies for my nails. <laughs> So it's it's a little bit wonky because uh, the yarn that I used to to purl that row was frogged yarn, and um, yeah, usually or ideally after frogging you would have to soak the yarn so that it's straight again. Otherwise, it's kind of like an instant noodle uh, wave. Uh, so that's why it's not very. Um, regular there but uh, I used to I used that pearl round to mark the um, the uh, transition from the three millimeter swatch to the 3.25 millimeter swatch and I'm going to uh, add a couple more rounds or quite a few more rounds and then measure again uh, because I would quite like to knit the sweater 
and you know I, I could use it with uh, I could knit it with a three millimeter but then I would need to knit a much uh, bigger size um, and so that's more stitches so that's more knitting time and I would still need to um, try it on every once in a while to make sure that it's the correct size um, because if I knit a larger size and it might be right for my stitches widthwise but it will um, the row gauge wasn't as different uh, wasn't as big of a difference between my row gauge and the pattern row gauge so um, that could mean that I that the width would fit me but then uh, that my um, but that the sleeves would start too low so that it would kind of feel like a poncho so that's one thing to keep in mind if you uh, knit with a different gauge to the pattern so I'm just gonna try again and then see um, I've also been knitting on a secret commission um, and I've made a lot of progress so that's good <laughs> but I can't show you anything yet I did also make some other things I will show you my progress on the home hat first so it's not much um, because I really was having some wrist pains um, I am knitting this one almost identical to the very first home hat that I made, the orange and blue one. So I'm using the same pattern and the, the same charts. So if you follow the home hat pattern, you can also recreate this version exactly if you just switch out the colors. And I'm just now beginning the triangle section which is just before the crown decreases. So I did um, make some progress on this because, but um, you know, I would usually finish a hat in two days. So <laughs> having it on the needles for more than two weeks is, yeah. Uh, I think last week I was here. So I did add on this whole new chart and I do like how the colors play with each other and um, I think it's going to be um, I think the recipient will really like the colors because uh, as I said last time he's not too abundant with his color choice um, so I think he'll, he will really appreciate this and it will be wearable for him. So there's just a few more triangles that I'm going to do or kind of like zigzaggy lines um, before doing the crown decreases. Um, so that means I can mark the progress on my board. And I would say I'm just about Hmm, just over halfway done with this. So, this is my progress board. So I'm just going to mark it up until here. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that, the end is in sight. So that is great. Maybe I should continue doing that for all of my podcast episodes because I quite like having a progress board like this. Um, I, I love uh, making to-do lists and then ticking off all of the boxes. So um, this feels really satisfying to me. <laughs> so I might just do that. Um, just a quick mention. The home hat pattern is free on my blog, newleafdesigns.nl. You can also get a paid PDF version in my web shop, also on newleafdesigns.nl, or on Ravelry, where you can find me as Caramelletje. Um, or you can simply type home hat, and then you will find the pattern as well. Um, Yes, and the yarn that I'm using is mostly Escapius Metropolis. I've also used some leftover Regia, and I'm not quite sure what the dark gray yarn is, but um, 
it's all leftover sock yarn and it's really fun to use up your stash this way. I have also been treating myself to some new gifts uh, and one of them arrived already and it is this beautiful project bag with a gorgeous rose fabric and it is by Fraukje and I will put her Instagram handle on the screen and I will link her Etsy shop below. It's Fraukje's Wool Boutique and she she dyes yarn um, and she has a lot of project bags and she even has a discount code at the moment. I think it's uh, December in all caps for 10% off. Um, I saw that on her Instagram stories yesterday. So go ahead and use that discount code and have a small business owner do a happy dance <laughs> when, when uh, she sees your purchase. So um, yes, I absolutely love this bag. It's pink lined and um, it has a very handy handle right here. And in it is my um, <laughs> tutorial sock that I have knit yesterday. Um, so I am going to film a new sock tutorial for my Patreon page. Um, my Patreon page is kind of like my paid YouTube channel. So there's a lot of videos on there, lots of master classes about um, how to knit a sweater, how to uh, knit color work, um, and lots more things. And one of the videos that I want to film next is my gusset uh, short row heel flap heel. Uh, so if you've knit socks before you're probably familiar with the heel flap and gusset um, but that will also probably mean that you have knit that for a cuff down sock. This sock is a toe up sock which means that you start from the toe and then knit up and um, you don't often see a gusset and heel flap in these kind of socks. Uh, so I am going to record a tutorial video for that. Um, it's for the same heel that is included in my Subtle Sock Collection ebook. And I just, I just love the fit. It's uh, um, a shorter heel, um, has a really good fit on me, but the added room that the gusset gives you is just especially for color work because for a regular sock um, a short row heel fits me perfectly but for color work that means uh, color work is a little bit less stretchy so that would mean that it would have to stretch like this over my ankle and that would also distort the color work in that area um, and having just this little triangle of extra room uh, really improves the fit and also the look of a color work sock. And I have knitted in different colors to show where, where you uh, begin a different um, set of instructions. So there's the toe in dark blue, then the leg, then the gusset in um, light blue, then the short row in light purple, heel flap in medium purple, then the leg and then the ribbing and I thought it looked really cute as well. So I'm uh, going to be recording that soon. And then yesterday I started another sock, um, which I am loving. And I was inspired to knit this sock because I'm uh, participating in the sock bash um, uh, knit along by the Grocery Girls. So on their Ravelry page uh, or in their Ravelry group they have a sock uh, knit along each month and last month the um, theme was DK socks or gift socks. I don't know. But you could enter your sock twice if it was a gift sock. And this month the theme is Scrappy. So I am making Scrappy socks and I love the way it looks so far. This is all my um, Metropolis minis, the leftovers from the Metropolis minis 
that I used for my Around the World sweater, which was um, I used 80 minis, 80 times 10 grams, and it was um, a huge box. I use it for my Colorwork sweater, and I have loads left, and I thought I would um, use some of it for scrappy socks because I love scrappy socks. I've knit two pairs of scrappy socks before, but um, they were all gifts, so now I get to knit it for myself. And before you ask, yes, I will be recording a tutorial on how I weave in my ends for scrappy socks. Um, for the beginning, I um, with the toe increases, it's just a little bit too much to juggle. But for the um, for the foot portion, I am weaving them in as I go. So I will be um, recording a tutorial video for that. I'm not sure yet if it will be Patreon only or if it will be on this YouTube channel as well. Um, so I'm still thinking about that. But yes, ah, I just love it. And yes, I am also writing down the colors that I use and in which order so that if you want, you can recreate these exact same socks. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> so that was already all of my knitting. Um, and as promised for the rest of this podcast episode, I will talk a little bit about knitting injuries. But again, be aware that I am not a medical expert or I'm not um, giving medical advice of any kind or <laughs> take it with a grain of salt you know but um, I did want to share my experiences because I think that a lot of knitters experience this and I don't hear it very often in knitting podcasts and sometimes there is this you know big kind of pressure that uh, we have to knit a lot of things in between podcast episodes so that we have enough to show and I think that can be a little bit counterproductive sometimes. So I wanted to share about um, the wrist pains that I've been having. I have them every once in a while. Um, um, I'm trying to think if I ever have them in my right hand. I think it's 95% of the time it's my left hand and um, I've also I've broken my left arm 12 years ago 13 years ago I've broken it two times so um, I think that might have something to do with it as well um, and also um, I went to I don't know how it's called in English I think it's the same physiotherapist anyway uh, the, the movement therapist um, she said that I am hyper mobile which means that my joints move a little bit more than they should so um, and that means that my muscles or joints or whatever is keeping it <laughs> in place it's it's sometimes a little bit too elastic so that i can move my wrist uh, i can twist it a little bit further than that um usually people can um and that combined with having my arm broken two times uh i think has really um weakened this arm uh, so sometimes when I'm knitting or when I'm crocheting, I will experience some wrist pains here. Uh, one time I even got like, um, <laughs> how to, how to call it, like a little ball here of, um, I think it was just water. <laughs> it sounds so gross. So there was a little, um, yeah, thing here once. Uh, and that just went away with, most of the knitting injuries go away with just not doing anything, just rest. Uh, but as a knitter, that is really difficult. But yeah, there's, it doesn't always happen with, uh, it doesn't always happen with knitting or crocheting. You can also be doing, uh, I don't know, cleaning or, uh, lifting heavy pots or, um, you know, vacuuming, um, lifting things um, 
another knitter told me she used to uh, clean a lot and then she used to wring the, um, don't know if that's the right word, See, she used to twist the moisture out of the cleaning cloth like this and that would also really weaken her wrist. Um, so yeah, a lot of causes, um, but if you have any wrist pains, it's just not fun. So I have two um, types of things that I use to alleviate the pain. One of them is a brace. Uh, you can get these things at your drugstore. Oh, putting it on the wrong way around. So, so you put it on like this. Make sure it's not too tight. Um, and having this on usually instantly takes away a bit, little bit of the pain, which is really great. Um, so I would say have this handy or just a bandage like this. It looks a little bit scruffy now. Um, like this, elastic uh, bandage. And then you uh, fix those with clips like this. Um, I just wear one of these things whenever the pain gets too much. Um, so over the last two weeks I've been wearing any one of these uh, a couple hours every day. Um, simply be it, it just helps and um, so one thing that it does is that it stabilizes your wrist um, and it just takes, takes the pain away a little bit. And the second thing that it does is that it um, helps you keep aware or it helps you be aware of your wrist, you know, that you don't have, that you don't want to be doing a lot of stuff with it. Um, so it's the same when uh, you've injured a finger and you're like, ah, oh, no, I won't put a bandage on it because it'll be fine. Uh, and then you go and wash your hands like you usually would and then rub your towel and you're like, ah. But then if you wore a band-aid over it, you would like be really careful with it. Um, and that's the second benefit of these braces that you, um, you know, you're aware of it and you're like, oh right, I shouldn't be doing that. Or um, maybe I'll ask someone else to do this lifting or cooking or whatever. So yes, I bandage it. I take care that I do less. <laughs> Sometimes I even wear the bandages overnight, but then I make sure that I don't wear them um, during the day. Um, you don't want them to be on for too long or too tight. Um, and some another thing that I have noticed is that with um, with knitting, it's less of a strain on my wrist as with crocheting because with crocheting I tend to really move my left wrist back and forth. Um, <laughs> do I have a crochet hook? Yeah. Okay. So even though I am right-handed to crochet To crochet, I move my left wrist more than I move my right wrist. You see, this one is constantly going from left to right. So with crochet, I, I know that if I get any pains there, I just have to stop. Whereas with uh, knitting, and especially continental knitting, um, it isn't that much of a strain. I'm doing way more movements with my right hand than I'm doing with my left hand. But still, too much of anything is a bad thing. So um, I think it's, it was because I have been gift knitting like crazy and that has uh, kind of kick-started this wrist pain now. 
Um, so I really just need to take it down a notch. <laughs> Don't do as much. Um, which of course is really difficult and not fun. But I wanted to talk about it um, because I don't think that it is talked about enough. So there you go. Um, do tell me about your experiences with knitting or crochet injuries and what you tend to do and how difficult you find it. <laughs> um, I did um, yesterday or was it the day before i watched an old episode of the uh, of the grocery girls and uh jody was also experiencing some wrist pains um you know and and they work in a grocery store so they all they are probably lifting boxes the whole time and she had this really professional looking brace so i might look into getting one of those um it was like um yeah, it, it looked like a cast, but then only from from like the, the middle part of your arm down, leaving a gap for your thumb, and then just going here. Um, and that looked really comfortable. I've also seen like compression gloves, but I'm not sure if that will actually help. The number one thing that helps is rest. <laughs> I feel like I've forgotten something, but um, I'm not going to remember it within the next minutes. So uh, I'm going to leave you with that. And um, I do hope that I will have more to show next week. But if not, that's how it's going to be. And perhaps I won't record a full podcast episode then. Um, so we will see. Uh, do please watch my Vlogmas episodes. Um, I upload them every day and um, I really enjoy watching other people's Vlogmases too. So I've watched um, Brooklyn Knit Folk, I've watched uh, Kim Smith Happy from the Alternate Universe uh, Yarn Store, I've watched Sandra's, um, Sandra from Cherry Heart, uh, Amy from Stranded Dye Works, I've watched Shelby Monet, I, I, I'm I going to watch Gigi because I keep thinking, oh, I need to watch Gigi's um, Vlogmas and then something else comes along. Um, but I've been really enjoying everyone's Vlogmas and I hope you are too. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again next time. Bye! -bye.